This is the most serious warning we've ever made. As you'll see in this short film, we have uncovered an unsolvable problem at the heart of our financial system. We believe the outcome of this problem is inevitable, and the recession, joblessness and instability you see right now is only the first stage of it. Many people think the slump we're in now is as bad as it will get, but the truth is, it's only the start. In fact, you'll certainly see the consequences of this deep-rooted problem unfold across the cities, towns and villages of Britain. No one will escape the fallout. In all recorded history, no country has ever recovered from the financial position we find ourselves in today. No government has ever been able to reverse this trend. No emergency action has ever come close to a solution. This inescapable problem has only ever had one outcome, financial collapse. You can challenge every single one of our facts in this film and we're confident you'll find that we're right about each allegation we make. Then you can decide for yourself. Will you act now and take this chance to protect yourself and your family from the catastrophe that's brewing in our financial system? We hope so, because if we're right, you'll need to act very quickly. In fact, the downward slide has already begun. Britain is about to be flattened by a tidal wave of debt. It doesn't matter if you vote Conservative, Liberal, Labour, UKIP, or for no party at all. The facts are the facts. Let's take a look at some numbers. Two and a half years ago, when the coalition government formed, we were already in a huge amount of debt. In fact, the previous government had left the country sinking under £700 billion worth. The coalition has spent the last two and a half years desperately and very publicly trying to get our finances in order. We've had an austerity budget. We've had tax hikes. We've had the cuts. But for all that, our national debt is still growing at an incredible rate. Despite David Cameron's talk of austerity, he's going to add an estimated £700 billion to the national debt in just five years. That's more than Tony Blair and Gordon Brown added to the national debt in 11 years. It's more than every British government of the past hundred years put together. The fact is, when you look at our finances as a whole, the coalition isn't cutting anything. State spending is going up, our national debt is going up, and our interest payments are going up. By the next general election in 2015, our national debt is estimated to stand at almost £1.4 trillion. It's clear, our public finances are in an enormous mess. Anyone can see that. And to some extent, some politicians will admit it. But add in our financial, personal and private debts, and an even darker picture emerges. Compared to the size of our economy, Britain is now one of the most heavily indebted countries in the Western world. That's official. Our total debts stand at more than five times what our entire economy is worth. Proportionately, that's more debt than Italy, Portugal, Spain, and almost twice as much debt as Greece. Those are four countries already in the throes of financial crisis. We're the odd one out because we haven't collapsed. Yet. But things can't stay that way for long. You see, the only countries that have more debt than us are Japan, where the economy has stagnated for 20 years and the stock market has crashed by 75%. And Ireland, where the housing market has crashed 50% and the government has been forced to accept a bailout. In fact, our debts tower above almost every other nation's. Here are the figures that prove it. That's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yet you've probably never seen this fact reported in the Telegraph or on Sky News. And the worst part is, even that isn't the full story. Because when you add in all of Britain's unfunded obligations, promises the government has made on things like public sector pensions, our debts swell to 900% of our economy. That's right. When you add everything up, we owe nine times what our entire economy is worth. Our political leaders still like to see Britain as a world power. But let's not delude ourselves. It's clear to see we're totally broke. 
It doesn't matter which set of figures you use or which way you look at Britain's debts. We're merely talking about different shades of disaster here. A country can either pay back its debts or it can't, and it's very clear to us that Britain can't. But how did we get here? After all, we were once the richest and most powerful nation on earth. What happened to all of our money?